Today, as the title suggests, we will be learning how to flank on Tensatown. I've got plenty of neat little tricks to share with you guys, so let's jump right in. For the first time ever in this series, I'm going to recommend that you guys use the outer edge of the Tensatown map for your flanks. However, make sure you always do these flanks with vehicles both for your protection and to make the flank speedy and reproducible. Starting off with the left side of the map, this route here has potential from either spawn. However, I want to emphasize that you should remain on the path when executing a flank using this route, as veering off increases the chances you will hit an obstacle or a tank. From the US spawn, you're going to want to travel up this route and into the houses that are behind D. This gives you the greatest chance of both undetection and survivability, while also giving you great access to the D objective. These houses are also where I recommend that you put down a squad beacon so that you can do this flank over and over again. Now before I return to the outskirt routes, I want to talk about D for a second. D is my absolute favorite objective to flank on Tensatown. There is a combination of both snipers on the roof looking at C and also infantrymen thinking they have safety due to the walls around D that gives you this great chance to flank without really being detected slash contested. And this combination has undoubtedly given me my best flanks on Tensatown. You see, you generally have two options when attacking D. You can either go for the basement where tons of enemies will be spawning, or you can either go for the roof where a ton of enemy snipers won't be paying attention to you. Now the D basement is pretty straightforward, especially when the building gets destroyed. However, the roof, there's multiple options for getting up there. And while the grappling hook will do just fine, if you decide to take the stairs, you have to be careful of mines and claymores. However, there's also an amazing sneaky opportunity here. And this goes for Tensa Town in general too. You see, these explosives on the staircase gives the snipers a sense of safety. However, you can use that against them. If you're able to get by the explosives without triggering any of them off, then you're gonna catch the enemies on top of the roof by surprise. And you would be surprised at how many explosive setups you could get by if you just took a second in your approach towards them. Many explosive setups you could get by through jumping over them or using the staircase to grapple over them or using the staircase rail to walk over them. There's truly many ways to do this and if you can use your brain to get by then your flanks will have generally just more success. Now let's return to our discussion of using the outside routes on Tensatown. When going from the D side to the A side, what you want to do is take that outside route but as you get closer to A, try veering off onto the road that leads you to C. This gives you a decently uncontested route to the C objective where enemies are usually oh, looking shit. towards the D direction. This works especially well during the beginning of rounds because many teams either dart for D or C. And again, the houses in this area are a great location for a squad beacon. And while C is generally a more difficult objective to approach, its flanks can be just as fruitful if you're successful. Now let's talk about the route on the right side of the map. This area is a little more difficult to traverse because of a ravine that runs through it. However, if you're more careful with your driving, you can use this to your advantage because not a lot of people like to come over here. When driving from the A side towards the E side, you want to come out of your spawn, do not take the main road, veer off into the woods, and hop over the ravine using your vehicle. In either a conquest or domination sense, you're trying to flank the C objective. For conquest, however, this works best when the enemy is trying to siege the C objective, not when they have it. In contrast, coming from the E to the A objective, you kind of have some options. For conquest, you're going to want to take that same ravine route and go towards the bridge and go underneath it and then try to attack either the B or C objective from there. For domination, and I do realize you do not have what any vehicles here, you're going to want to just run from that topmost spawn down into the now C objective. This distance is surprisingly short from the spawn area to this objective, so you really don't need vehicles in this case. And honestly, this area in domination games almost competes with D for my favorite spot to flank on Tensatown. Like, I have made some absolutely insane plays here. And even though this objective in Domination Games is pretty out in the open, you can still get there pretty effectively with not a lot of enemies knowing about it. As always, to cap this video off, I just want to go into some general tips that you can use to make your flanks better on Tensatown. There are two pipes on this map and they both connect to the ravine and they're both kind of near E. Honestly, these aren't going to do much, but it's good to know that they're there. For your low out, I recommend using SMGs and ARs. Also make sure to carry around a grappling hook as it is helpful on this map. Flashbangs and smokes will also go a long way too for you when trying to flank. Well, that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any future content or maps you want me to cover, please tell me in the comments. This video itself was actually the result of a poll I recently did on my channel. Regardless of all that, however, if you've made it this far, I just want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.